All right, let's take a look at another CSCS problem. Factory machines. Uh, so what's going on here? So we have a factory with n machines. We want to make t things out of the machines. Each machine has like a speed at which it works, so it takes a certain number of seconds to make a product. Um, and they can all work at the same time. Uh, so the question is, how long do we need to let them run uh, to make t products? It says we can freely decide their schedules, but obviously we just want to run all the machines, you know, full blast the whole time. Um, and so t is up to a billion, and the machines can take up to a billion seconds to make one product, which is uh, pretty slow. And we have 200,000 different machines. Um, so we're going to solve this with uh, binary search. Um, so the idea is, if I told you how much time you got, it would be kind of easy to tell me how many products I get. Um, right? It's just each machine makes, you know, if you run them for like x time, they each make like x over ki products or that. Um, so the total number of products is the sum. Um, and so we can binary search for the smallest time uh, because it's at least t products. Um, right? Because it's it's easy to go from a time to how many products. It's harder to go from like a number of products to how much time we take. But um, so let's, see some so let's let's see how that works. Um, factory machines. So n and t. So the general idea for binary search um, is that we have this lower and upper bound, right? And we know that our answer lies somewhere in the middle. Um, and so what we can do is check the midpoint. Uh, and if this is, uh, so the idea is that like, if some answer works, any bigger answer works, right? Like if we can make it in x, you know, make the products in, in x time, then we, you know, x plus one time will also make that many products. So we check if we can make the products in x time. Uh, if we can, we know that the answer is at most that big. Right, so now the answer is somewhere missable. If we can't, we know that the answer has to be bigger than that. And so we're in this interval. And so we can cut the length of these intervals in half every time. Um, and so it's only gonna take log n steps to figure out, you know, to cut it down to a length one interval, right, where we actually know the answer. Um, right, maybe it looks like that, like that, and then like that, and, you know, we're sort of narrowing down the answer. Um, so to do this, we actually need to figure out sort of a valid interval. So it must take at least zero seconds. That makes sense. So what's the maximum amount of time it would take? Well, we might even make a billion products, and we might only have one machine that makes one product every billion seconds. So it could actually take uh, 10 to the 18 time. It's a little scary, because it's pretty close to the maximum 64-bit uh, ender. So we might have to be careful about it over here. Um, and so how does the binary search work? So uh, so well, our interval uh, is not a size one, right? So eventually we want low to equal to high, right? These are inclusive on both ends. So when low equals high, we narrow it down to one thing. Um, and so this is checking uh, you know, whether or not we're done. And it will always be the case that low is less than equal to high. Right, so eventually we're gonna have low equals high and then we're gonna put out low as the answer. Um, so we want to check the midpoint, which is a little bit higher than two. Um, so if that works, then we know that the answer is at most that. And if it doesn't work, then we know that the answer has to be strictly more than that. Right? Uh, okay, so now there's like a thing that you always have to think about with binary search, uh, which is the endpoint. So like, imagine that low was zero and high was one. Do we want to test zero or one? 
Uh, well, it turns out that we want to test zero because in this case, we'll get high equals zero. In this case, we'll get low equals one. And either way, we're done then. Um, sometimes, like if the binary search happened to shake out like this, then we would want to test one in that situation, which we could do like this. Um, so anyway, there's, yeah, this is like how to make sure that it terminates. Um, and you can always do that just by thinking through this, this one case. Because um, all the cases were like low and high wouldn't like that. Um, if you don't feel like thinking about that, you can also just like check the values, like check low and high at the end, basically. Um, but I like doing it this way. And so we need to just fill out this function of whether or not a certain value, you know, a certain number of seconds works. So let's do that. Um, so this can finish all this or false. Um, so x. And we're also going to pass through uh, this machines because we need that information too. Um, I'll just call it. So we have at seconds, the machine makes the number. Uh, product of the AI seconds, so the total number of products made by this machine is x divided by AI. Um, and here we need to do something slightly tricky. Um, so there's actually like a genuine overflow issue here, right? X could be up to 10 to the 18, um, and AI could be 1. So we could be adding, we could be making like 10 to the 18 products with each machine. Um, and there's 200,000 machines, and 10 to the 18 times 200,000 actually does overflow a long, long 64 bit integer. Actually, even 10 times 10 to the 18 overflows a uh, 64 bit integer. Um, so we need to make sure that this ants doesn't overflow. Um, but, you know, t is at most a billion. So, uh, and we know that like a single machine can't overflow it. Uh, so, if we just check every time, if we're already done, then we know that we can't overflow, right? You would need like 100. Uh, like if you're below T and you add one machine, you're not going to overflow. Um, that's the point. So that's why we're doing this check every time and not just at the end of the loop. If we save it till the end of the loop, um, ants might actually be negative because it overflows the people that are introduced. Um, so anyway, if we didn't get more than t products, then we return false, um, and that's actually it. right. So we just check the midpoint every time, and if that's enough time, then we know that we need less than or equal to that amount of time. Uh, if it's not enough time, then we know that we need strictly more than that amount of time. Um, and eventually, this is going to cut us down to the actual ones, right? Because we're cutting sort of the distance between low and high in half every time. So even though it starts you know, quite big at 10 to the 18. It's only going to take log 10 to the 18 um, iterations. To finish, each of these iterations takes a uh, linear time. So the whole thing is unlogging. Um, the fire stream, vector, and that's it. Stirred and long. So we did need to worry about overflow, and this is our sort of accommodation for it. Uh, I see. We should also pass in key. Sure. Okay, that's in step eight, which is right. And just to show you what it, we're doing, uh, I just cannot be the values that we're testing. Um, so you can see. Right, that it starts testing very large values of t, but all these are fine, so it keeps cutting it in half and half and half, uh, you know, all the way down to eight. And it doesn't actually take that long, right? This is only know, like a hundred things to try. Um, so that's that's fine actually, right? That's that's on login. Um, so you know, there's log 10 to 18 sort of visually represented in lines on the, on the screen. 
Okay, so we got eight for the sample. Let's see if we can get the answer in general. Cool, so that worked. Um, so yeah, that's binary search. Uh, very useful to know. Um, this is the general formula I always use. Uh, so inclusive interval, um, stop when they're equal, uh, test the midpoint. Sometimes you need to add plus one here. Um, if you think through the low equals zero and high equals one case, figure that out, because you want it to not go into an infinite loop, basically. Um, and then based on whether or not, you know, that the mid value works, um, you can update high or low uh, accordingly. Um, and like, there's a couple like details to think through here. Like sometimes this is like mid or mid minus one, or sometimes you know that you found the exact value and you can just break early. Um, but anyway, it should look something like this. Uh, so that's my research, and that's how you do the poem.